Hello, my name is Morgan. I'm Benji. And we're both students at Duke University. We worked in conjunction with the Stopa Lab this summer to analyze Durham police data. So it, we analyzed Durham police data from the, and the goal of these videos, uh, this video along with the next couple that we will make is to kind of present our process from the starting point of we have no data, but we have the broad picture goal of analyzing police data to uh, see if the police are treating people equally, uh, regardless of general demographic characteristics like race, gender, uh, income status, stuff like that. Uh, so our goal is to explain how we got from no data to some sort of analysis. Our analysis is far from final, but through the process, we hope you can learn something about collecting police data in your own county or in your own city. Uh, yeah. Basically, so basically our goal is to explain our process so that hopefully other people can learn something from it. Uh, so the first step of our process, as we said, is that we had no data, but we knew we wanted data. <laughs> um, and our first thought, as any child of the 21st century knows, is to look on the Internet. Um, and luckily, the Durham Police Depart Department publishes data on this helpful web page that you can see here. Mm -hmm. So we, once we went to the Durham Police Department, we realized that they actually do publish all of the arrest reports and incident reports in the form of PDFs on the website. Um, Unfortunately, PDFs are not that useful for doing data analysis on yes. us, which led to a whole multitude of problems that will explain in this first video. Right. Um, so yeah, so as you can see, the page allows you to search by report information um, or by a specific address if you want to look if crimes are happening um, to a specific place you're going, a specific neighborhood, or by case number if you're looking into a specific case, a specific arrest, um, and you know the case number for it. Um, Yes. So what we um, realized is that there are over 20,000 PDFs since um, there are PDFs published from 2018, halfway through 2018 to um, 2022, where we are now. And it was going to be nearly impossible for us to go in and download all of these PDFs by hand. It probably would have taken us the entire summer to do just that. So we knew that we had to find some other way to get the data. So with the help of Chad Topaz, one of the co-founders of QSide, uh, we wrote the, the code that you can see, that you'll be able to see in just, just a, a second, second. <laughs> um, using a library in R called R Selenium, uh, which basically creates a virtual web browser uh, where they can, rather than having a computer like hand click everything in the web browser and hand download all the PDFs and save them to a proper folder, stuff like that, uh, the browser does it for us. And the browser basically will just click through the PDFs faster than any human could do it. It would once it gets to a certain part point in the code, it will just basically download like thirty PDFs, PDFs in like less than a second, mm -hmm. uh, which is obviously very helpful to us. And the basically the goal of this was to compile all the PDFs so that we had them all in one place, uh, which will later be useful uh, in the second step that we'll talk about at the end of this video. Uh, we could basically just run a for loop over all of the all the PDFs to get the information actually off of them. But this was a very important step to wrangle them from this website, which is has a very difficult UI and makes it hard for humans to download it into one place that we can do it on our own. Right. So like Benji said, we're just automating the web browser to click the mouse just as we would. Um, and so on the website, going back, we can see that we, um, so what we did is search by um, date. So the website allows you to search for 30 day, all the arrest reports within a 30 day period. So we wrote um, a loop that updates the date within the web browser that we're using. And you can input these dates. So you can see start date and end date. So the um, Selenium browser would have to basically for highlight this and effectively type in new dates uh, before a click search so that it could... Uh, change so that it would be looking in different windows because it's not very useful to download the same 30 PDFs over and over and over and over again. Right. So um, once this would happen, this is what the page looks like of all of the PDFs of arrest reports and then also incident reports. Um, and this is what one of the arrest reports looks like. So we basically downloaded 17,000 of the these. And like Benji said, the next step was um, getting the text off of these PDFs. So the PDFs are selectable, which was important for um, the next step that we're about to discuss. But it's obvious that we can't do any sort of analysis with PDFs because um, the data is not in a tabular form. So what we did from there 
was using a different R script um, in our public GitHub, which is called. Uh, well, sorry. <laughs> the the R we have a public GitHub where all this is accessible. We'll say the name at the end of the video. Mm -hmm. uh, Anyways, sorry. Um, so the script that we use to grab the text from the PDFs is called parsearrest.r. And basically we use the tabulizer um, library within um, RStudio. And what this does is it's able to make the arrest report that we just that you just saw pop up in the viewer of our studio and then you can like drag and drop or highlight specific areas on the pdf that correspond to text that is useful um or that we need so the pdf is going to show up on your screen right now for, so, yeah so for instance uh we would basically create a variable called agency name which would have this whole area, which would be cover the area of that whole box. So the once we run a for loop on all the PDFs, the tabulizer package looks in each PDF at that area and reads all the text into that and creates a string uh, like any other string in our Python um, that we can manipulate and do data analysis on and like search for. Um, so we basically just ran a for loop over all 17,000 PDFs that we collected uh, with the to save variables for every piece of information that we were interested in and yeah. part of the point of this is that we gather all the information off of these pdfs at one time so that once we're doing analysis later on which we'll talk about in a future video uh we can do analysis on literally anything we can think of because we have all the information like say that height we randomly think that the police might be biased uh, or treating people differently based off height if we although that wouldn't be immediately something like the first thing that we would think to do analysis on if later for some reason we think that could be useful or interesting we've collected height information now so we have the option of doing analysis on it later right so like benji said we tried to collect all of the information possible so basically every single box that you see um on this pdf we scraped the area from even if it's not filled out some of the cells we definitely had a lot of blanks um but it was just useful to grab all of the information that we possibly could could um, and at the end, we were able to get it all into a very nice data table. Um, it has over 17,000 rows and 200 something columns. Um, yeah, yeah, and you can see that not every uh, entry is filled out. There's some missing data, different, like one of the things that we learn and actually a small conclusion that we can draw is that officers are not super, at least in Durham, aren't super consistent with how they fill out the paperwork. So again, that's not like a major finding or anything, but definitely if as part of our, the point of our project is to look if police are accountable, it's a little bit hard to say that they're super accountable if they're not filling out the publicly available record the same uh, in every way. So there is, that's like a minor finding that we have now. Uh, also, if you're interested, our public GitHub is called Small Town Policing Accountability Data 2022. Uh, and my GitHub username, which is where it's published under, is Benjamin dash M dash gold, uh, all capital letters. And that's also uh, available. Uh, like you'll be able to see that hopefully in the comments of our video or in the description. Um, but yeah, that, so that's an intro into how we got, how we went from no data to data. Uh, our next couple of videos will talk about how we clean the data and what analysis we ran on the data. Thanks for thanks for watching. Yep. Bye bye.